for my project that shows the Burgess dehydration. A quick little tidbit about this is that it's used to convert secondary and tertiary alcohols into alkenes. So with that in mind, we have our OH group, which at the end is going to be an alkene, and we have our Burgess reagent. So the sulfur is going to take the electrons from the OH and make an O to an S bond. And since at the S bond can only have six um, electrons, then that means this oxygen, these electrons must go up there to make a negative because it has one too many. Um, because of this, then the oxygen gets a plus because it needs one. Um, and then what happens here is the NET3 is then going to be broken. The bond is going to be broken, which means that the O can then make the double bond onto the S once more. So we have the double bond. We have the NET3 on the side. These electrons are going to be used to then take away this H, which means the H is taken away and the, the electrons from this are then given to the O, which then takes away this plus. So now we have our final step, which is where all of the bond association energy takes place. And this is the main intermediate on our graph. Um, we have first the electrons from the N. The N is taking the hydrogen away. Now this is an H and a C bond, which is then broken in order to form the double bond right here, which is then the alkene. And then because that double bond is formed, that means this O must be broken, the CO bond must be broken, and then this is the end product, which is what we expected. An example of this is from Sultane and Bielowski. Um, I will include their, or the um, bibliography in the, um, the comment section of the video. So they start out with this, and what, they want, what their, what their uh, purpose was was to use DMSO with the Burgess reagent and what they found is they use that to make an aldehyde, which is pretty interesting. So that's one of the examples that I found in the literature. So finally, we'll end with the graph, the coordinate graph. And as we see, I'll give a quick full view before I get into it. Um, as we see, we see that it's low, the reactants um, side is lower than the product side, which shows immediately that it's endothermic. But here, like I said, this is our starting material. This is going to be our final with the double bond. And then once again, this is the intermediate. With the bond dissociation energies, we have the CO bond here added to the CH bond because it's bonds broken minus bond or bonds form. But I said bond because we only had one bond that was formed, which was that final product right here. Um, and this was a positive 167 kilojoules over moles. Um, which is a positive H value. Um, based upon that, we know it's endothermic. We know that the G, the delta G, is going to be positive. And because delta G is positive, we can predict um, that the K value will be less than 1. And then, finally, in order to speed up this reaction, since it's endothermic, you would need to increase the temperature, which would make the reactants up here and the products down here. That is my presentation. I hope you enjoyed.